Hey everybody, Justin Seely here, and this time I've got an Adobe Illustrator tutorial for you. I'm going to be showing you how to add a grunge effect to your artwork inside of Adobe Illustrator. This is a question I get a lot, actually. People want to know how to distress a logo or how to grunge up some text, things like that. It's easy to do in Photoshop because you can do it with brushes and layer masks and things like that, but in Illustrator, it's not exactly straightforward. You know, some people try to maybe put a grunge texture over an image and then use a blend mode, then clipping mask masks and it can get really messy but as you see here in the finished example I've got just a regular graphic that's all vector that's already been grunged up so exactly how did I do it well let's take a look go over here to the original image which is just a standard vector logo that you see here now it's all got separate parts you can see I can click on all the separate parts here but the first thing that I want to do is I want to make them all one big part by creating something called a compound path this is what's going to allow us to then take all of the grunge elements that we add to it and subtract them from it later on without creating any problems so let's go ahead and select everything on the artboard you can hit command or control a as well and then let's go up here to the object menu go down to compound path and select make and you'll notice no visible change to it whatsoever except now when I click on something instead of it being one individual piece it's all one big solid thing so no individual pieces throughout the logo whatsoever all right now we're gonna bring in the grunge texture so we're gonna go to the file menu we're gonna go down to place and I've got a grunge texture this is something that I just picked up off of Google images you could search for vector grunge that's usually an easy thing to find or you can use a stock service like uh, Adobe stock and find it that way so I'll go ahead and place that into the document this is gonna come in it's gonna be really big and so what I'm gonna do first is shrink it down so you can actually see what I'm doing and when I shrink it down it's gonna look something like this now you may be a little confused as to how we're gonna get this to actually subtract from it because obviously it's a raster graphic well we're gonna use something called image trace so first things first there's a button right here that says image trace go ahead and click on that when you click on that it's gonna go through a little bit of a process now depending on how fast your computer is it may take a little time so just be patient now this is not a desirable result as you can see it didn't pick up a whole lot of the grunge texture doesn't really look all that realistic it's kind of chunky and uh, it just really doesn't look all that great plus it's got the big white background behind it which is definitely what we don't want so now we have to refine the tracing result so up here in the control panel there's a little button called the image trace panel or you can go to the window menu and you can simply choose image trace and that'll bring up this panel right here and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by choosing a preset and the preset that I normally choose for things like this is either black and white logo or sketched art I'm gonna start off with black and white logo you're not gonna see much of a change happen unless of course your default had been set to something like photorealistic or something like that and so once we do that now it's time to start bringing back some of the detail of the grunge the easiest way to do that is to adjust the threshold here so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start pushing this to the right hand side and I'm gonna push it up to about 160 now what is this doing exactly well basically when you are adjusting the threshold it's looking at this image and it's saying okay anything that is less than however much percentage right here 150 whatever anything that's less than that in terms of being white or black like gray we're gonna automatically make that white and anything more we're gonna make it black so in this case what we're gonna do is just bring that all the way up and watch as I drag that up how it starts to add in a little bit more detail and I'll just keep dragging all the way over until I get as much detail as I want now I'm also going to increase the number of paths in here quite a bit and you'll notice when I do that it's going to add in a little bit more of the detail it's subtle but it's there and once I get a little bit more of that we're going to reduce the noise of this quite a bit down to one pixel and that's going to pick up even more stuff watch what happens here and once it finishes there we go see all the little grungy pieces that I picked up just by adjusting the noise now to get rid of the white background we simply click on ignore white and that's going to ignore all the white background pieces and just give us the grungy black texture see what I'm saying now you could be done right here right because it's it's obviously it's grunged out but the grunge actually extends out into the rest of it and it doesn't actually knock out the image so that you can see through it so let's go ahead and close the image trace panel here and we're gonna go ahead and hit expand 
in the control panel. That's going to turn all of that into editable paths. As you can see, there are a ton of paths now. And I'm going to go up to the object menu, choose compound path again, and make. That's going to make this all one big path. Now it's up to you to adjust this to the size that you want it. You want to make sure it covers the entire image and then just kind of adjust it, get it to look you want. And if you want to see it as a different kind of look here, what you can do, let me go to the uh, object menu here, unlock, because I've got the background locked. And what I'll do is I'll just change the background color to something like red, that way you can see it. So here's what it looks like right now. You can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Let me lock the background back again, object, lock, selection there we go that way I can kind of move in here without causing any problems and so what I want to do basically now is I want to remove all of the grungy pieces from the original logo so I'll select everything on the screen go up to the window menu choose Pathfinder and the Pathfinder is something a lot of people find confusing but it's actually really easy to work with in this case we've got the grunge pieces on top of the original logo and we want to subtract the grunge from the original logo so that it knocks a hole in the logo wherever the grunge happens to overlap the easiest way to do that is to use this button right here minus front so we're gonna click that and magically it's gonna take just a second there it is there's our grungy logo and so now if I unlock the background layer again and change the color you can see no matter what it always shines through and we've got our nice cool grungy logo and you can do this with text you can do it with logos you can do it with just about anything you want inside of Illustrator so there you go hopefully it makes a little bit more sense now how to grunge up or how to kind of weather something inside of Illustrator if you have any questions for me you can hit me up on Twitter I'm at Justin Seeley or you can go to facebook.com slash FB and as always please subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm gonna be posting a lot more free videos like the one you've just seen here over time so be sure to check that out. Also, don't forget to check out my courses at Pluralsight.com. You can find some of my latest courses there that I'm always working on, and I'll be releasing more of those throughout the year as well. So, until next time, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again real soon.